What is lumbar scoliosis? The spine consists of vertebra or bones that are stacked upon another forming a straight and neutral alignment. And this is what you see in a normal spine. And these adjacent vertebra are separated by something called intervertebral discs. And these discs provide cushioning or structure and it acts as a spine shock absorbers between all the bones. And the spine has three main sections, the cervical, which is the neck, the thoracic, which is the middle and the upper back, and the lumbar spine, which is the lower back above your pelvis. Now, scoliosis, we know, is where you develop an unnatural sideways curvature. And this spinal curvature needs to have a rotational component, making it a three-dimensional problem. The minimal size of this curvature needs to be measured on a Cobb angle of 10 degrees or greater to be called a scoliosis. A lumbar scoliosis is when this unnatural sideways curvature with rotation occurs in the lower back or the lumbar spine. Now, scoliosis can develop anywhere in the spine and it can affect any section and it can affect more than one section at the same time. Meaning you can have a thoracolumbar scoliosis, you can have a lumbar scoliosis and a thoracic scoliosis, or you can just have a lumbar scoliosis. The thoracic spine is the the longest and the most commonly affected by scoliosis, and the most common type of scoliosis would be a right thoracic scoliosis. The lumbar spine is the most, the lumbar scoliosis or lumbar spine is most common for back pain. So when patients have a lumbar scoliosis, they're more, they're more associated with a variety of spinal conditions, including low back pain and discomfort. Now the low back has to support the weight of the entire body, entire trunk, so it feels the effect of bending and twisting and lifting motions, and lumbar scoliosis is the most common to cause pain. Also, lumbar scoliosis can be the most progressive in the adult stage. Maybe we see lumbar curves progress quicker in the adult stage versus a thoracic scoliosis. So knowing this, that lumbar scoliosis can have more complications associated with it. Now, why is scoliosis classified and why is, you know, and how is it classified? Well, the biggest part of diagnosis when we look at scoliosis is really the cause, meaning is it a idiopathic scoliosis, is it traumatic scoliosis, is it degenerative scoliosis, is it an idiopathic scoliosis? And this is normally assessing the cause. The second thing is gonna be the patient age. Is it an adult or adolescent, infantile, juvenile scoliosis? And then of course, the last thing is severity. Is it mild, moderate, severe, or very severe? And that's depending on the size of the curve. So where it is, lumbar, thoracic, thoracolumbar, age, adult, adolescent, and of course, uh, the type, meaning either neuromuscular, idiopathic, or degenerative scoliosis. When we look at all these classifications, we can help, we can help determine and streamline the treatment process based upon when we look at all these variables and looking at them, and we can look at all the variables, we can develop the most effective treatment option for that patient. We know scoliosis is a complex uh, problem and that requires a customized treatment plan. So normally this gives us a starting point, meaning if we have an adult lumbar degenerative scoliosis, we start from here and then we customize their plan based upon whatever is needed versus if we had an idiopathic adolescent lumbar scoliosis, we start with this treatment plan and we customize it from that moment on. Now, what are some common signs of lumbar scoliosis? Well, believe it or not, uneven shoulders, uneven hips is probably the most common. We see one waist flat, one waist that's not flat. That's the most common asymmetry notice in, in, in a lumbar scoliosis. The arm's not hanging symmetrically, meaning more space between one side of the arm versus the other. Um, pelvic tilt, meaning one side higher than the other, could be very associated with lumbar scoliosis. Low back pain or leg pain is a common pain that's associated with lumbar scoliosis. Pain on one side of the back or pain going down into one side of the leg, something like sciatic pain, could also be associated with lumbar scoliosis. Changes of gait and coordination and balance can also be affected by lumbar scoliosis because the lumbar spine can affect that. Also in adult patients, any type of a lower extremity problem like hip pain or hip degeneration, knee pain, or foot pain can be also associated with lumbar scoliosis. Now, every case is unique, so the amount of pain somebody experiences as a result of lumbar scoliosis is really unique to that person. We know kids normally do not experience pain as a result of scoliosis because as they're growing, normally the pain, there's no pain associated with it because what's causing the curve to progress is elongation or growth. However, lumbar scoliosis is definitely more painful adults because it's compressing as a result of gravity. And this compression over time can compress the muscles and tissues and nerves that exit into the body, which can lead to more, 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 more pain. And the most common complication of lumbar scoliosis is sciatica, 
due to compression of the sciatic nerve, which starts in the low back. Now, lumbar scoliosis is by far affecting the lumbar spine primarily, but we know that scoliosis affects the biomechanics of the entire body. And since scoliosis is progressive, meaning it will worsen over time, it's going to worsen either in the adolescent stage during growth or during the adult stage during as a result of gravity over time, which means both things are going to be worsening. So the key thing is that if when you diagnose this, it's being proactive with treatment that's going to affect the causation of your problem. Most patients that seek treatment as a result of pain in the adult stage are normally just seeking try to get seeking the, how to get out of pain, but not necessarily reducing what's causing it, which is actually the lumbar scoliosis. In adolescent cases, if they're diagnosed and they're non-surgical, normally they're just told to watch and wait. And as they're waiting, their curve is worsening, leading them closer to surgery. So at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer proactive conservative treatment options that can out counteract the progressive nature of scoliosis. And we do this by integrating multiple forms of treatment in a comprehensive manner to not only reduce the scoliosis, stop the progression, but most importantly, make sure your, your curve isn't gonna worsen to lead you to more invasive treatments, which can have life altering effects to your body and health. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.